are godly, you love the Lord, but you've not allowed him to give you all things that pertain to life. You just let him give you what pertains to godliness. You know, you're seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord. But the Bible says that if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the best of the land. It doesn't say some, the best. What does the best look like? You know, the devil dresses his kids dripping. I mean, you look at these uh, stars and celebrities and all these Anybody out there in the world system, they're dripping with what looks like prosperity. Why? Because the devil knows that draws people in, right? And so we have a kingdom already given to us with an inheritance, with provision in everything we have need of. But most of the time, we're obedient. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. We come to church, but we're not willing to receive all that inheritance. Many times, because like Gary said, religions told us we don't deserve it, or we think it's humble. We think it's humility. Okay, I I just had a big birthday. My husband surprised me with this amazing birthday party. It was like the marriage supper of the lamb almost. Amen. It really, really was. And he really, he pulled it off without me knowing about it. And I, I hesitate to even talk about it but because it was so good. And I think some of us are like that with the Lord. We don't want to share how good he is, his blessings. And sometimes we almost pull back to a place where people look at our life and go, if that's God, I don't want it. You know, back when we were broke, poor, living in the farmhouse, going to probably the pawn shop, I was asked to do a Bible study at this denominational Bible study. I came in, I taught them every week, and they loved it. The prophetic moved, and I prophesy. The Lord said, I'm going to show them my spirit. And so I would say, to, like, there was a lady there, and I said, you're pregnant, and you've got a baby girl. And I was like, where'd that come from? And sure enough, she was. And the Lord would just do that to shake up their religion, you know, and, and get them thinking, wow, there must be more. She really, there really something to this. But the one week I spoke on tithing, at the end of it, they looked at me and they, they were kind of, you know, a little bit, you can always tell, you talk about money, boy, you step into a zone. A lot of churches won't even talk. There's two things they won't talk about, sex and money. They will not, right? So anyway, I, the next week I come back to the Bible study and the one lady says to me, she says, my husband wants to know we don't tithe and we live in a much nicer house and drive nice cars and you guys live in that old farmhouse. How come? Well, how come? I had to swallow hard. I said, well, you know what? We're getting a hold of the kingdom of God, and we're sticking with it, and we're going to see that God's promises all come to pass in our life. You know, But I did go home, and I said, how come? <laughs> well, there were some things we just didn't know yet, right? But I also made a decision. I said, God, you know, have you seen the movie Gone with the Wind? I'm not saying or anything about, but I'm, I'm from Georgia, so I saw that movie several times. So anyway, Remember at the end, Scarlet puts her fist up in the air, and she says, "His God is my witness, right? <laughs> I said, Lord, you are my witness. <laughs> we are not going to be broke anymore. We are not going to live in an old farmhouse anymore. We are not going to live below what Jesus paid for in our life. We are coming out of this, you know, and we didn't have any land. We were renting that old farmhouse. <laughs> I couldn't even pick up the dirt and say <laughs> anything. It wasn't even our dirt. Amen. <laughs> You got free dirt. I didn't even own any dirt. <laughs> but God in his goodness, in his inheritance, in his grace, his glory, he turned everything around. Amen? He turned it all around. And today he's blessed us not only with house, but houses and lands. You know, not because of us, because of his goodness. But we had to be willing and obedient. We had to be willing to receive it and stop living in that, that what we think is humility, but it's false humility. You know, like Gary said about your kids, they just say, hey, pass the biscuits. Give us this bread, right? That's what that, that's what that prayer says. Give us the bread. And pass the biscuits. It's just like kids do in the house, right? But what, would it be a little weird if you went to someone's house and their kids were like, oh, Daddy, oh, please, I, don't, I'm, I know I don't deserve it. I know I, I really shouldn't have it, but could I please just have a, a biscuit? Could I please? You'd think that dad was abusive, right? You'd be like, what is wrong? Well, that is what the body of Christ acts like our dad's like, right? 
and the world's watching us. So meanwhile, they're dripping with all their jewels and all their stuff and their cars. It's not about stuff. We know that. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his right way of living and all these things will be added to you. Amen. When you go to the pawn shop, nothing's being added to you except interest, and it's going to be so high you can't even get that gun back, right? Right? The world's corrupt, and their systems are corrupted, and they're shrewd. They know how to manipulate stuff, and we see that, right? We've seen a lot of it, and more and more and more keeps coming out. God wants you blessed. He wants to show you he's the God. He's El Shaddai. He's the God of more than enough. You don't have to live broke. You don't have to live in poverty. And, you know, you may not. You may say, I have all the finances I need. I don't need to even. But do you have healing? Do you have wholeness in your heart, peace? joy. All these systems of the world have set up to steal, kill, and destroy from you. Amen. And so we just want to start this tonight, fan in the flame. Just fan some flames in you. Okay, maybe I'm not living up to my potential. Maybe I'm not living what God has for me. Maybe I'm just my nose is to the grindstone and I'm just working and working and working and working and working. And you know, as Bello and Jennifer were sharing, they're willing to do the work. They're willing to do the work. Things weren't there. They had to trust and look to another. The kingdom of God provided all their needs, all their needs and more. Gave them bigger vision for bigger projects and bigger things that are that's making them a lot more finances without as much labor. Amen. And so we've all, some of us work, 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 and some of us don't work because we just are like, ah, oh, it's just too much work. I don't want to do what they do. Either one of them is two sides, you know, either one of them is a ditch. God doesn't want you to live in the workaholic ditch <laughs> where you never have time with your kids and your wife and your family. And also your health breaks down. One day you can't do all the things maybe that you used to do. And so you're like, okay, I need God for that. But then there's that also that other side where there's people who have no vision. They have no vision. They're just sitting at home. Just do not let the, do not let the devil steal your destiny. He is trying so hard. He's trying. Welfare just gives you just enough money not to try. It's a trap. It's a trap. And so are entitlements and so are uh, stimulus checks and all those other things. We kept telling people all during this COVID, do not stop your business. Do not stop working. Do not let them sit, make you sit at home and do nothing. Now, some of you, I know you could not. You had to do certain things. But people we knew that own business, we said, do not stop doing business. Do not stop seeking God and putting your faith out and working. Keep working. Keep working. And do you know those people that we've told that to, our, our partners? They have risen to the top. They've risen. One of them started out with one truck, and now he owns a fleet because he was willing to work when there was nobody else working. He showed up, and when they closed their business, he bought their trucks. And when they closed their business, he bought their trucks. And now he has contracts with Walmart and all these places. And he's driving like crazy. He's all, and everything. now he's calling us, okay, how do I keep up with this? What's the next step? What's the next step? The blessing has overtaken him. So anyway, Father, tonight we are looking to you for our provision and everything we've seen in the last two years has shaken things enough that we've even realized in ourselves, were we really walking in faith? Were we really seeking you? Were we really looking to your provision? Or were we just comfortable with what we already knew and kind of got stuck in some places? Or we thank you that even the enemy meant harm. You've, tw you, you've shook things up and you've turned it for good. For those that have faith, Lord, for those that have eyes towards you, your word is full of stories of people that were oppressed but rose above it and became the head out of being being a situation that they were at the bottom. They came to the top because they trusted in you and would not be moved. Father, we decide tonight we will not be moved. We'll not be moved by wars and rumors of wars. We'll not be moved by rumors of famine. We'll not be moved by pestilences or anything else, God. For you, Lord, are above those things, and we are seated with you, God. And so you make it, you're making your enemies your footstool, and we're just watching it happen. We're just part of your kingdom 
them assignments, and we're out in the world to let them see a difference, God. So make a big difference in our lives, Lord. Shake up our mentalities, our poverty mindsets, our religious mindsets, Lord. Strip them off of us. Strip them down. Strip them off, Lord. We don't want to trust in the wrong things, God. We want to not, we don't want to miss your coming. We don't want to miss you, Lord, in any way in this hour. This is the time. So shake us up, Lord. Stir us up. And we thank you. We walk in the provision and blessing that you have for us, Father. And the world, you know, when, when the Israelites left Egypt, They left with all the spoils of the battle, Lord. We're going out of here with the spoils of the battle, God. They're going to look at our lives, and they're going to see the blessing of God on our life, and they're going to say, oh, my goodness, there is a God. And where did those people go? I better find him. Amen. (laughs) 